What up, family? Ghetto News Report, Mary Dash 20, Mary the Lead. Today is Moon Monday in my city, Chicago, August 29th, 2022. So they say, you know, uh, I'm going to be real, uh, really real about this uh, conversation piece. According to my Sony clock, it is 7. 15, but it could be 714. Who knows? It could be 713. Time is of the essence, right? And precious. And time is money. And when people take time out their busy schedule to try to uh, enlighten you about whatever you may or may not be going through or trying to overcome adversities, if people just acknowledge you. You know, that should be taken into consideration and not taken for granted. You know, Al Jerome got this song called We're In This Love Together. And I looked outside my window and part of the song, it says, it's like berries on the vine. It gets sweet every time. Now, it's berries on the, grind, on the vine right here. You know, this here, um, Beautiful. I don't know if you've seen it. I want. I want to um, put it all the way up, but this thing be tripping coming down, you know. But let's see what happens. Oh, see, it don't go up like uh, it's supposed to. Uh, and I really would love for y'all to see this this wonderful uh, display of my higher power outside my window because it reminds me of one of the eight wonders on the, of the world. But yeah, it has berries on the on the vine right there. And every now and then a bird will come and, uh, you know, chill with me. And I'll be like, look at God. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. I want to be honest and open-minded and you know, real with people because this is we living in real time. This is not scripted. This is not um, planned. It's spontaneous. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get better at what I do, and that's speaking. Um, yeah, but this here miracle was not outside my window when I first got here, May thirty first. My, yeah, May 31st of 2017. And uh, it has grown with me, I would like to say. Because, you know, I was going through some cancer that they gave me. I don't want to harp on all the, you know, bad stuff. I just want to get to the point. But when the fall comes, it turns maroon. It's beautiful. It really is. It's kind of like a, a, a sight to see. You understand what I'm saying? For real. Kind of lifts my spirits. Uh, but I, I, I want to talk about a relationship that I was in, and I hope the young lady is getting better right along with me and everybody else. You know, I believe I'm in a heartbreak hotel. You know what I'm saying? Because it looked like it was a hotel at one time, this building I'm at, 6210 South Kenbar Avenue, Chicago, North 60637. And it's a bunch of guys and you know, they act like they hate me. They want to hate me. You know, they want to blame me for all the heartbreaks and things of that nature. But I'm just as heartbroken as they are. So it's like, you know, hurt people hurt people and misery loves company. But I don't like being miserable or hurt. So therefore, I try to enlighten them with my story and my truths and to let them know, you know, I may have looked as though I had everything going on. But for the most part, I was just a dressed up garbage can looking for help and a way out. Now, my um, his girlfriend, Lawanda Joy Jacobs, the Jehovah Witness and uh, insurance agency, you know, she worked for Blue Cross Blue Shields. I tell this story all the time. I used to uh, work, you know, on the platform of the Dan Ryan 87th Street platform selling general merchandise and I met her like in 1993 selling cassette tapes around when um the movie the five heartbeats came out and you know she kept 
coming to me or whatever and stuff. You know, she wasn't buying anything. I think she was just being nosy and stuff, to tell the truth. Or, you know, she was running from her problems or she was trying to involve me some kind of way. I was not in a relationship or nothing. You know, I was just making money, paying my bills. And the girl before me, you know, or I should say the girl before I met her, you know, she used to come up to me. I don't know her name or whatever and stuff. She was gorgeous, though, for real. You know, this is basically a play on, um, you know, um, Mary J. Blige's song, Good Morning, Gorgeous. And I wrote a remix rap and, um, story, and I'll put it in the description of this video. Um, but this one girl, and Dwayne, my so-called best friend, knows at the time, you know, I'm not lying. She was gorgeous. And I'm telling you, she invited me over our house. I brought her some champagne or whatever and stuff. You know, and I just thought we was going to get to know each other without getting to know each other, right? And, you know, back then I was trying my best to, you know, act like a man, look like a man, and be the man. You understand what I'm saying? For real. Portray the role of a man. And I was like, do this girl know, this lady, because she, you know, she had her own apartment. Does she, does she know, you know, that I'm a girl? You understand what I'm saying? Now, you get lonely. People get lonely, right? You understand? And we all play games. But at the end of the day, you can only fool yourself. And the last person you're going to play and save is yourself. You know, after all the stuff is said and done, you know. And, you know, I went over to her house and I told Dwayne, the, the girl that was gorgeous or whatever, I said, stay in the car. You understand what I'm saying? Because I knew I wasn't going to be long. And I went in the house, a stranger's house, right? And the girl came out the room with a, you know, two-piece teddy on. And I was like, "Woo! what am I supposed to do with all this? Now, I'm young, impressionable, and alone, but not lonely. See, they think everybody that's single is desperate. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, mm. You know what I'm saying? Any real guy, for real, she was gorgeous, I'm telling you. They would have jumped on it. I said, excuse me, but uh, I'm a girl. And then she tried to play it off like she didn't know or whatever and stuff. And so, you know, I don't know if I left the champagne with her or I took it with me because, you know, I think I spent about $100 on it and stuff. <laughs> I don't drink drugs, smoke, or fornicate. You know, I'm not a real drinker. You understand what I'm saying? When I was a drinker back then, you understand what I'm saying? I could buy a six-pack of Miller's back in the day when in my 20s and it'll stay in the you know what I'm saying, refrigerated forever, you know. Uh, but I don't know what happened to that champagne. I don't remember drinking it. I, she might have, I might have left it with her or whatever and stuff. But she tried to act like she didn't know and stuff. And, you know, I didn't see, I didn't talk to her no more. And after that, you know, I just went to, you know, doing me again, you know, nothing. I really don't do anything. I'm a boring person, quiet guy. Long story short, here come Lawanda, right? And, you know, I'm trying to figure out you know, because I'm playing a role as a man, right? Not anymore. You know, I'm your ghetto news supporter, Mary Lynn, that's when Mary Lynn originated rap music. And most people that come around you, they already know who you are before you know them. And she stalked me, Rwanda, for six months, okay? And, you know, I didn't say nothing. I could have been like, you know, I'm trying to make money. Could you go on about your business and stuff? What, I mean, what's your purpose? You know, but, you know, she was kind of cute and she was helping me make sales of anything. I'm just keeping it real, you understand? But I was making money before her, so I want people to think that I needed her. Long story short, you know, I noticed she was talking to some other guy by the name of Levert or whatever and stuff. You know, and, you know, I peeped the game and stuff. I looked up the stairs and I seen her across the street at the uh, gas station on 87 talking to Levert. He had a uh, blue Cadillac at the time. You know, I'm not lying. Real talk. And I still, you know, I think my competitive spirit kicked in and I was like, oh, I grab her before he will. You understand now? I know they probably knew each other and, you know. Six months, like I say, passed, and our anniversary, September the 9th, the same day as my um, so-called best friend, Dwayne Lewis' birthday. Nothing happens in this world by mistake. You know, you got man gigolos, and you got, you know, girls who are Jezebels. And before we learn how to um, have a real relationship or get to know ourselves, we are turned into sex slaves, or we can cuss, you know, we can fight, we can do everything wrong. You understand what I'm saying? Before we get to know ourselves. And that's all it is. A bunch of little people have grown up with that same mentality, gigolo player, um, whatever, spirit or whatever and stuff. And 
you know, I'm very cautious because it's only me, myself, and I in this world, and and everybody else that I was around had other people, so I was able to, um, you know, act as if they was my family, but when the shit hit the fan, they was gone and I was left all alone. Okay, I said I ought to say this. It's a thin line between love and hate, and that movie is real. You understand what I'm saying? You can't play with people's hearts and stuff, but some people, they set out to break your heart and to do you dirty and do you wrong because they know you'll come up and they try to stay in the game and they don't want, you know, they use you as a respirator pretty much and stuff. And I felt that's what happened. But long story short, this shirt says ordinary people creating an extraordinary world. Okay. Now it takes all kind of, you know, get the world going and be special or whatever. Now I knew my ex-girlfriend, LaJuan Joy Jacobs. She was special. Otherwise I wouldn't have stuck around with her for, uh, 15 years, but I also know she had problems and things of that nature or whatever. And I believe she had a drinking problem, some kind of problem. I don't know. She never really told me anything, but we went to Alcoholism Anonymous and we stayed together, you know, at Alcoholism Anonymous up until she hit the fan May 31st, 2008. But she never spoke at a meeting or nothing like that. And I know people was wondering who she was and stuff. I found this bottle yesterday. It's a Crown Royal bottle. You understand what I'm saying? And I found it. It was in this bag right here. You know, I wash it and I'm going to keep it for a souvenir or whatever and stuff. Now, they produced this uh, liquor, you understand what I'm saying, in 1939. And uh, Tina Turner was born in 1939. That was the first movie me and LaJuan Joy Jacobs went to see at the drive through in my city, Chicago. What's Love Got to Do With It? And Mavis Staples from the Staples Singers is born July 10th, 1939, which... You know, both of those ladies are um, older than me and my ex-girlfriend, Lawanda Joy Jacobs. But I knew Lawanda would take a drink but because when I was in AA, she and I went to a hotel and uh, I had got some beer just to see. You know, no test, no testimony. I'm telling the truth. And she did. She did drink. I don't know if it was beer or whatever it was. She knows. But you know, I don't drink drugs, smoke, or the I just was trying to figure out what is to this girl because I couldn't, she would never open her mouth. She was always playing that Spengali quiet secret. But those be the ones that'll kill you. You understand what I'm saying? The ones that don't open up their mouths and stuff for real. And then they'll make it seem like me, the outspoken person, is the one coming at, at them and stuff when the truth of the matter is. She knows. She knows. So somebody must have groomed her to try to, you know, make it seem as though I'm problematic when she had a problem. I'm hoping she getting her shit together. Long story short. You know how I do this going out to the people who be, you know, playing games and stuff because, you know, and gambling with their lives and other people's lives and putting people's lives in jeopardy and stuff when the truth of the matter is we are all kings and queens, not pimps, players, and hoes, okay? So that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. You're gorgeous, you're handsome, you're um, you know, you're all that. You just have to believe in yourself and stop, you know, trying to bring other, bring your problems into other relationships because that's what a lot of us do. We take the baggage and just carry all that garbage. And then when you realize you got a real one, you know, it's too late. And then you try to cover it up. And that's why the world look like shit today. And I feel like crap most days because people hate it on my realness and my, I am beautiful inside and out. But I try to hide it because most people are not. All right, you know how I do. This is the uh, six ball. This is for the ones who playing games with themselves because you're not playing games with, with me and my Mary McAmyras no more. We up on game. Country Wayne, I keep telling you. All them girls know each other and stuff because I, they played the same game on me and stuff. For real. Step your game up, man. Now. I'm number one, whether you believe it or not. Okay? It's the truth. Now, here you go to scripture. Now, this say game over right here. We all got game, right? This is April. And let me see. This is uh, 2 Kings chapter 25. 24 and 25. Add it up. Okay? Hey, it says game over. You understand what I'm saying? Quit playing. City Hall. You understand what I'm saying? Let's flip it. I got to go. Peace.